I rented out an Airbnb in Northern California last summer. While scrolling on the app, I found a ton of nice houses. There was a specific location that I liked though, so I chose to look at houses around there and found that there was almost an entire street of Airbnb rentals. I looked at all of them and chose my favorite and booked it. A month later, I flew in and picked up my rental car, then drove an hour to the Airbnb. I pulled into the driveway, and I should mention that it was really late, like 10 or 11. All I wanted to do was get my stuff inside and crash on the bed, but as soon as I opened my car door, a middle-aged lady from the house next door started waving at me. She was standing in the empty driveway, waving and greeting me to the neighborhood. I smiled and waved back, trying not to get stuck in a conversation. I kept my back to her while I unloaded my suitcase and duffel bag, then walked up the driveway to the door. I could see her in the corner of my eye, still standing there, watching me as I walked up and entered the Airbnb. I locked the door behind me and shook my head in confusion and exhaustion, then carried everything to the bedroom. The house was nice and seemed to be in order, but I didn't bother with really checking it out because I was in a hurry to shower and get in bed. I turned the shower on and washed off, but while I was in there, I heard the doorbell ring. I ignored it, which I would have done even if I wasn't showering. It only rang one time, so I assumed they left and I didn't even check after I dried off and just went straight to bed. I slept nearly 10 hours and got up well rested in the morning. That day, I went into the city and visited a popular restaurant for dinner, then drove back to the house at 7. When I pulled in, that lady from last night was standing by the front door. When she saw me, she ran back to her house and went inside. I quickly got out of the car and went to the front door, entering the code and going inside. I didn't know who this lady was, but the way she ran once she saw me made me uncomfortable. Over the next hour, I paid attention to all of the windows, checking frequently to see if that lady came back. I was sitting in the kitchen on my laptop when something hit the back door. It sounded like a rock being thrown at it. I looked over at the door. Again, a rock was thrown, hitting the back of the house this time. I stood up and looked out the window, and at first I didn't see anything. But then I looked closely, and in the dark field, I saw a small figure standing there. It knelt down, picked something up, then threw it right at the window I was at. I backed away in shock, until I realized it was probably that lady. I opened the back door and called out, telling them to go away. I could barely see their figure in the dark. They weren't moving though. I threatened to call the police, and they still didn't move. A creepy feeling rushed through me, and I slid the door shut. I wasn't sure if I actually wanted to call the police. I mean, if it was just some crazy lady, then I didn't really feel threatened. I decided to wait and see if she does anything else, and after a while, it seemed like she'd given up. Two hours later, I went to bed. By then, I wasn't even thinking about the lady anymore. I woke up in the middle of the night though, hearing something. I didn't know what I heard because it was quick and quiet and I wasn't fully awake yet, but I knew I heard something. Only a few seconds later, the faint sound of footsteps started coming down the hallway outside my room. My eyes widened and my brain went straight into fight mode. I jumped out of bed and swung the door open. Standing just a few feet away from me was that lady, barefoot in my hallway. She quickly ran back and left the house. I followed her out the front door and watched her go back inside her house. Then I locked my front door and called the police. When they came and knocked on the lady's door to confront her, she didn't answer. This is when we found out that her house was actually an Airbnb as well, owned by the same person that rented me my Airbnb. No one had that house booked though, so the lady somehow knew the code and was staying in there for several days. 
We couldn't find any reason for her to be after me, or any signs of who she was, or where she went. I left that night, and flew back home. I didn't know what she was going to do if I hadn't woken up, but with her still out there, I didn't want to stay to find out. I turned 18 back in the 90s, and my uncle offered to rent out his summer home by the lake for me and my friends to have a nice spring break trip for the week. He frequently rented out this spot to friends and family, kind of like a family-only Airbnb at the time, and promised me when I was old enough that I could rent it out too. A little backstory on my uncle. He was extremely rich. He owned a few lounges in Vegas and LA with his buddy that were really big back in the day. He was really chill, but I only saw him a few times a year because he was usually in Vegas. But when I did, it was always a good time. My family and I lived in Pleasant Prairie, Wisconsin, while my uncle's lake house was in Antioch, Illinois, which wasn't too long of a drive as we were both by the border, so maybe 20 minutes. My parents were hesitant to let me go, and at the time, I thought it was because I was young and they didn't trust me, but after everything I discovered, I don't think that's what they were worried about. Ultimately, they let me go and said I could only bring four friends. I only really had three, so it all worked out. My best friend Tim came with me the night before my other two friends were supposed to show up to help me get everything together. My uncle's lake house wasn't big by any means, but it was really nice and even had a pool with a hot tub. He had a whole game room downstairs with pinball machines and a pool table. This house was everything I imagined when I thought of money. We got there around 5, and my uncle had been in town a few days ago to leave me the key inside the mailbox. I gave Tim a tour, and he was in awe at how much cool stuff my uncle had. I was really excited to show him the basement, because that was my favorite part, but I noticed the door to the basement had a couple new locks on it, which I didn't think anything of. He did have some pretty expensive stuff down there. Finding the keys to all the locks was really annoying though. When we finally got down there, I started showing him everything, until he mentioned a strange door in the corner that had a desk in front of it. We were both curious, so I opened it to see what was inside. A few boxes were stacked in the corner, and against the wall stood four huge gun safes. The first thing out of Tim's mouth was what does someone need four gun safes for, and I was thinking the same thing. My uncle doesn't hunt, he never has, at least from what I know, so it definitely wasn't for animals. Tim tried convincing me to look through the boxes, but although I was curious, I couldn't disrespect my uncle like that and invade his privacy. I felt as if we had seen way more than we were supposed to. I led Tim out of the room and locked the door. Skip to a few days later, Tim mentions the room to our other friends, and now that's all they can talk about. I open the door for them to show them the room just to get them to shut up, but it just makes them go crazier, throwing out different theories of what's in the boxes and the gun safes, how many guns he has, or if there's bodies in there. By the end of that night, they were fully convinced he was a serial killer, but I knew my uncle, and he wasn't like that but my friends pressured me to look in the boxes to make sure they weren't filled with license of missing people or anything, and if it wasn't for one of my friends being genuinely freaked out about the possibility of being in a killer's house, I probably wouldn't have looked, even though the curiosity was killing me too. I told him I'd take a peek, just to ease his mind. I opened the box and didn't see anything out of the ordinary, some pipes and a box of cigars, but mainly a ton of letters. As I shuffled through them, I found my name on one of them. I kept digging and found not just my name, but my parents, my little sister, my aunt and her husband and their children's names, the schools they go to, and my school, and my sister's school. And next to all of our names and info was how we would die, some ways being more gruesome than others. By this time, I was fully invested and I'm looking at everything else in the box, and that's when I find multiple threatening letters addressed to my uncle, basically saying that if the person sending them letters doesn't receive the money, 
then various awful things are going to happen. There were due dates for the money to be sent, and dates of consequences if not sent by then. And if all of this wasn't scary enough, I saw pictures of my oldest cousin walking around outside her campus with a description on the back of what would happen after they take her if they don't receive their share by whatever date. I put everything back in the box, and my friends were in shock. They consoled me for the rest of the trip, and assured me that if nothing bad had happened yet, then nothing will. Most of the dates on the letters were from many years ago, so I agreed with them. But in the back of my mind was this constant thought of my whole family's life being in my uncle's hand. And if he screws up, even by accident, we would all be paying the price for it. I told my dad when I got home, looking for some solace, but the only response I got was don't go through other people's things, and that was the end of it. I lived in fear until 2013, when my uncle passed away, supposedly by suicide. A big part of me wonders if that's true or not, and although I was sad, a huge weight was lifted off my shoulders, and I'm sure the rest of my family felt that too. I vacationed to Yukon, Canada in the fall of 2019. My youngest brother had planned to go with me, but had to cancel a couple weeks before due to work, so I went alone. I rented a cabin through Airbnb. It was remote, but still had paved roads and wasn't too far from town. When I arrived, I got everything out of my truck and into the living room. It was already dark out, so I couldn't see much of the outside of the house, but the inside was nice. It was a simple cabin with cozy decorations in all of the rooms, but it was already a little late and the drive had me tired, so I left everything still packed and sat on the couch. I want to say it was around 7.30 or 8, and I was only on the couch for a few minutes before I heard a disturbing noise from someone out in front of the cabin. It was a person yelling calling for help. The cabin was so far out, I didn't think anyone would be anywhere nearby, so I was already skeptical. I got up and looked through the front window in the living room. A man was standing outside by my truck, holding a hunting rifle and looking at the cabin. He didn't look hurt, so the only reason I could think that he'd need help was if he was lost but I still didn't trust the man enough to interact with him while I was alone in a remote area. I pulled the curtain shut and stayed against the wall. The leaves outside started crunching, approaching the front porch. Once the man was at the door, he stopped. I waited against the wall for a whole minute and the man seemed to just be standing outside the front door. Hey, I need some help, he called out. Please, my friend needs a ride to the hospital. I thought about replying, but I didn't say anything because I wasn't confident that he was telling the truth. He had a gun, and I had no way to protect myself if he was lying. Another minute passed, neither of us speaking. I saw you pull in, he yelled, banging against the door. His tone became aggressive which only deterred me even more from answering him. That was also just a strange thing to say. Why was he watching me when I pulled in 20 minutes ago? The man's footsteps started leaving the porch and going back in the direction of my truck. I waited until I was sure he had left, then looked out the window again, not seeing him anywhere. I then went around to every door and window and tested the locks. All of them were intact, except for one. It was a small half window in the kitchen, and the latch on it was missing. There were screw holes and scratched paint, indicating a latch used to be installed there, but had been taken off. It was odd and didn't make sense. What reason would anyone have to remove a latch from a window? I was getting really bad feelings with everything going on. I went outside and got my toolkit for my truck bed. I knew it was an Airbnb, and I technically was not allowed to make any modifications to the property, but I didn't care. 
I drilled two long screws through the window siding and into the frame, permanently attaching it so it couldn't be opened. I figured the owners of the cabin would probably never even notice it anyways. After laying on the couch for an hour, watching downloaded videos on my phone, I brought my suitcase to the bedroom and got ready for bed. There was no clock in the room, but I was laying in bed for a long time, definitely over an hour, just unable to fall asleep. That's when I heard some odd noises. A couple thuds on the outer wall of the cabin then some strange sort of scraping sound. It happened a few times, then it stopped. I was sitting up and staring at the bedroom door, not making any sounds. There were so many scenarios running through my head, mostly consisting of that man from earlier. I was probably sitting there in silence for 30 minutes, listening intently for any other noises. At some point though, Long after I heard the noises, I fell asleep. When I woke up, it was morning, but I immediately remembered the sounds I heard last night. I got up and walked slowly through the house. Everything seemed to be fine though, until I checked the kitchen. That small window with the missing latch had a small gap at the bottom, like someone tried to pry it open. I went out the back door and looked at it from outside, seeing scratches and dents. But the creepiest part of everything was that none of the other windows had any scratches or dents. Whoever tried to break in last night only tried to open the small window with the missing latch. I ran back inside and contacted the Airbnb host, then threw everything in the back of my truck and left the cabin. I don't know if it was that man who came to the house asking for help or maybe just some random person, but whoever it was had planned for this. I was lucky to have taken such a cautious stance on everything, because if I had opened the door for that man, or not screwed the window shut, then that cabin could have been the last place I ever stayed in.